Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer Whitford. I'm the Vice President of Lending in Greenstone's Elma office serving Greater Gratiot County. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some tips for loan applicants and what to expect when you're looking for a loan through Greenstone. A little bit about Greenstone before we get started is that we offer unique financing options, uh, including operating loans, real estate loans, equipment loans. We do finance part-time farming as well as rural residential customers, and we offer a full line of crop insurance and also tax and accounting services. We have a team of experts throughout Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin, and we've been serving rural communities in agriculture for over 100 years. A little overview of my presentation today is what to expect and what not to expect when you're preparing for a loan. Um, things to gather before you meet with your lender, talking about the lending process, and then I hope that you can all take away three things from this presentation. When you're preparing for a loan, uh, you want to make sure that you're setting expectations that are realistic. Um, so what you can expect is that the loan application takes time. If you don't have a relationship with a lender already, then um, it's going to take even longer because the, the loan officer needs to get to know you, get to know your paperwork, get to know kind of what you're doing and what you're looking at doing. Um, you can expect at least two to six weeks for your loan to close, depending on the loan request. And um, the more you can be prepared before you apply for a loan, the better. What you can definitely not expect is money in your account the next day and freedom to do anything with the money. Before you meet with your lender, a couple of things that you're gonna want to put together in is um, your historical IRS income tax returns and a current balance sheet or personal financial statement. A balance sheet is really a snapshot in time that kind of just takes an inventory of everything that you own and all of the loans that you have. For farm customers, we're gonna want a little bit more information too to look at your budgets, so your cash flow statements. If you're starting a new business, this is very important. Um, the historical tax returns are gonna give us your history, but a budget and a cash flow statement are gonna tell us what you will do once the loan is taken out. And um, especially if you're starting a new business, it's very important. The balance sheet, again, is a snapshot in time. And then a profit and loss statement. A lot of times we have loan requests that come up mid-year um, and income tax returns just really aren't that up to date. So a profit and loss statement is gonna give us the earnings and expense information uh, at a mid-year point whenever you are applying for the loan. Before you meet with your lender, you're gonna be expected to provide a realistic business plan. So we're gonna want in some format, and it does not have to be a very formal format. It just needs to be one that the loan officer can look through understand and kind of gather the necessary parts and pieces for your business. So we're gonna want a description of the business, goals and objectives for the business, your internal resources, a market analysis, which is very important because it's, we wanna make sure that you've done your homework and you're, you know what is on the market, if it's a new product, you know what, who your competitors are, and just looking at different things that are gonna surround your business once it is up and running. We'll like to see a sales plan, an operation plan, you know, revenues and projections. And we really don't like to talk about it, but we always need to talk about an exit strategy. It's not what anybody intends to happen, but we also need to be realistic about, sometimes businesses just don't work out. The plan falls through and things just don't work. So we need to talk about what do you do with all of these assets that you've accumulated if for some reason the business does not work. This page here is a one page, we call it a plan to succeed. It's a very uh, brief overview of a business plan that you can use if you're interested in using this. 
Um, it's going to define some things that we're looking for in making sure you've put together a lot of thought and um, into some of the processes for your business. So um, it starts out at the top looking for your mission. You know, what is the intent of your business? Where are you going to go with your business? What, what are you, um, what is your business for and about? Some of the objectives that you're going to want to put on your plan to succeed are going to involve people, financial production, and marketing. And that's just some of the things um, you can really put any of your own objectives into here. Those are some basic things that you'll need to think through and think about when you are putting together a business plan. And from there, you can drop down and use this to uh, write down your goals and uh, your action plans for obtaining those goals. Before you meet with your lender, you really want to understand what your lending options are because it's important to um, think about and align your request with what the funds are going to be used for so that your lender can look at and, and kind of work through what type of loan is the best for you. If you're applying for a line of credit, you're looking for funds for, an op for operating. So in a normal uh, cash crop situation, you know, that would be money to buy the seed in the spring and uh, it'll get paid back in the fall. Sometimes uh, operating funds get used for other things, but really if those things are not going to get turned into cash in the next 12 months, it really shouldn't be an operating loan. Um, we do offer short term or sometimes we refer to them as intermediate term notes. That's going to be for your capital expenditures. If you're buying a tractor, if you're buying a pickup or some sort of processing equipment for a business, those are going to be on a term loan because those assets are going to last a lot longer than just 12 months. Long term notes are going to be if you're looking at purchasing real estate, houses, facilities, you know, um, barns, those types of things is what you're going to look for a long term note. And the reason behind that is because real estate lasts a lot longer than a tractor does or a barn lasts longer than a tractor does and those sorts of things. Before you meet with your lender, you want to understand that we're going to look at your request based on five C's of credit. Um, the first one being your character. So if you're new to meeting with a lender and you haven't had any previous um, conversations or relationship with the lender, your business plan is going to speak volumes for what you're looking for, your integrity, and um, just kind of give us a background on, on how much homework you've done and how much thought you've put into the request that you have at hand. Um, I think it's great to always develop a relationship with the lender ahead of having a loan request. So that way, when you get that business plan put together, you have some rapport, you have some relationship, they know that you've been working on it and that you um, have you know, good character to look forward into this business plan. The capital piece of the five C's is gonna be your balance sheet which is that snapshot in time of your inventory of all of your personal assets and all of your business assets, all of your personal liabilities and all of your business liabilities. We're gonna look at two different things in capital. One of them is working capital. Working capital is really important because it's the cash flow that you have on hand that's gonna allow you to um, just keep maneuvering in the normal course of business. And then your owner equity is going to be uh, the percentage of your business that you own versus what you have loans against. Preferably, um, you know, we prefer that that's over 50% so that you have more ownership than what the bank does. Um, but we understand too, when you're just getting started and looking at if you're young, beginning or small farmer, that's not always possible. So that's why we, uh, you know, we can work with people if, if that is not at the 50% level. The capacity of the five C's is going to be your profit and loss or your cash flow statement. Really, the capacity boils down to your repayment ability, not only your repayment ability to Greenstone, but also your personal loans, um, your other business loans, and making sure that all of your bills are going to be paid at the end of the day. 
collateral for a lender is a second form of repayment. We um, don't intend to use that as a repayment on the loan, but it can happen from time to time. So you're always going to be required to put some form of collateral up against the loan. Um, conditions are gonna be your accountability. And that's where um, I mentioned earlier, always use the money for what it was intended for. If you take out a loan to buy a tractor and you don't buy a tractor, then obviously the accountability isn't there and it really speaks to your character. So then it creates a rift in your relationship with your loan officer. For your initial meeting with, you're gonna wanna meet with a lender. Um, it's really good to meet and have a relationship before you actually have a financing request. Um, and that way you guys can have um, an idea of everybody's expectations. Um, and then your lender can also, you know, if you're looking at something that's down the road, they can also talk to you about, you know, what you should, could, or just other options um, through that communication process. And then if it's not a request that Greenstone's willing to work on right now, um, there are other resources and, and having a good relationship with that lender, they can provide you a referral a lot easier if they know you. Um, and, and we can also work with the Farm Service Agency too to kind of partner up and uh, look at loan requests sometimes when they're outside of the normal box. So um, for obtaining financing, qualifications and expectations, you're gonna wanna be able to explain your business and talk about what your goals are. Um, we're gonna look at your credit history. If you have bad credit, that's okay, but tell us. Um, you wanna make sure that if you have bad credit that you, you're upfront, because if you are not upfront, then it creates, again, a rift in that character piece of the five C's of credit. Another thing that we're gonna look at too is your down payment capacity and what portion of the risk for your venture you can cover. In most cases, loans will require a down payment. Opportunities to work with the Farm Service Agency can lessen that down payment, um, but you really should be prepared to have some cash coming into a request so that you can show that you are willing to risk your own funds for the project at hand. So when you do apply for a loan, you're gonna to wanna to discuss the credit needs if you're looking for operating funds, equipment, or improvements or real estate, um, give a good explanation of what the loan proceeds will be used for. You'll complete and sign a loan application and then provide all the necessary documentation, which is the balance sheet, the income tax returns, the budgets and cash flows that we talked about earlier. Again, documentation, tax return, um, some deviation in your business over the last three years, maybe we'll wanna look at five years of tax returns. Every situation is unique. So if your lender asks for more, there's usually a reason and they're just digging a little bit deeper. So we're gonna need also a balance sheet for the farm and for the personal. Um, if you have any retirement or investment values that are placed on the balance sheet, we'll definitely wanna get a loan application so that we have your the authority to pull your credit. And if you're looking at a, purchase, um, we'll look for an invoice or a purchase agreement, um, and then your business plan along with your income and expense projections. Tips for uh, effectively working with your lender, being a good business person and knowing how much you need and why and how and when you're going to repay it. Um, being able to have those communication skills to be able to show and tell and explain to your lender um, is incredibly important. Um, just because the more you know about your business and the, the easier that you can communicate that to, it creates a lot of trust in that relationship. 
You'll want to be prepared with your financial statements, um, production data for your operation. If it's not a new business and you've been in business for a couple of years, we're going to want to see what you've done. Um, and then we'll want to make sure you only use the loan proceeds for the purpose that you stated. If you take out a line of credit and you buy a tractor, um, that's probably not the intention of the use of funds for the line of credit and it's going to hinder your abilities later. So it's really important to make sure that you're using it, the funds for the purposes on your application. Know your repayment capabilities and structure your credit needs accordingly. Um, you know, if you're buying something and you want to finance it on three years, that's great. Um, a lot of people don't like being in debt, but sometimes you have to be realistic about maybe three years doesn't work and being open to maybe a five-year loan or a seven-year loan, depending on the asset type. One thing that I can't, can't stress enough is don't prepare optimistic projections that you know can't be reached. Be realistic and conservative with your cash flow projections. Um, also with your expenses, the thing that we find a lot is that next year's production is going to be threefold better than last year's production and the expenses are going to go down considerably. Not to say that that couldn't happen, that, that does happen from time to time, but if that is happening, I, I'm going to ask for more information. Um, I'm going to ask for documentation a very long explanation um, because typically year over year things will trend fairly close to the same as they have in the past. You're going to want to communicate with your lender and make sure you live up to your commitments and keep in touch. Um, have your lender out to your farm operation. That gives us a great opportunity to look around, see what you're doing, get some buy-in and, and kind of just understand you better. Um, and then, you know, sometimes if you're if you're working with other people in your business operation, you want to introduce your lender to them so that we could all be on the same page. So if something comes up, uh, an expansion opportunity or, or um, anything of that sort, we can definitely um, just all be on the same page and have that relationship already. Timeline expectations are very important because um, the timeline changes for each loan type request. So lines of credit can typically be uh, finalized in a few days, given all of the information was provided to the loan officer at the time of application. Um, there are times where we have questions and we're going to, it's going to take us a few days to uncover our questions and we're going to call and say, hey, I need a little bit more detail. Um, so that does happen from time to time. Intermediate term loans are going to be for equipment or livestock. Um, typically they have a quick turnaround, but again, if all the information isn't necessarily clicking when it's presented to the loan officer in the beginning, it can take a little bit more time. Real estate loans definitely take a little bit longer. There's um, things that we need to do, uh, including title insurance. So most of the time we're going to need an appraisal. Um, and then if something comes up with those things, you know, it'll take, it'll take us a little while. Five to six weeks is definitely not out of the realm of being realistic for a real estate loan to close. If we're working with the farm service agency on a real estate loan, it's likely going to take a little bit longer than five to six weeks. So today's top three takeaways, I would say are definitely come prepared. And being prepared and confident in your business will help the process go more smoothly. There'll be less back and forth questions or emails or texts to try to gather that information. Um, be realistic about your expectations for your lender and your farm capabilities. Um, just know that, you know, if your projection is overly optimistic, it's going to take us more time to sort through process and look at all of that information. Uh, communication is definitely key and having a good relationship with your lender will go a long way. Definitely always be upfront and honest with your lender and if you have the ability to definitely uh, stop in 
chat with a lender, you know, talk to them about your farm business, even if you don't have a request, just because opening that door creates uh, dialogue and communication ahead of that, that ask for funds. Um, to wrap up here, we do have, um, Greenstone does offer some grow forward grants. Every year we allocate around $40,000 to grants for young beginning and small farmers. Young farmers are farmers less than 36 years old. Beginning would be a farmer that's been farming for less than 10 years. And small would be someone that has less than 250,000 of annual income. Grants can be used for first time tax or accounting services, educational seminars or conferences, or business consultations. Greenstone members are eligible for up to a $1,000 grant and non-Greenstone members are eligible for up to $500. If you have any interest in the Grow Forward Grant Program, you can check it out at our website, greenstonefcs.com backslash grants. Thank you uh, everyone for being here today. I really appreciate it. I hope this was a helpful discussion on uh, tips and tricks. If you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you.